I speak it tonight. I've, I'm a traveling addict, and um, I've had the opportunity to hear him speak all over the East Coast. And he has a very powerful message, visually as well as vocally. <laughs> and uh, I'll give you Ron H. Right. I'm an addict named Ron. Hi, Ron. And I'm, I'm here by God's grace and God's mercy. Um, I believe that it's not just a nice thing to say, a nice introduction. Um, they were going to electrocute me in 1971, and I'm obviously not electrocuted. <laughs> you know, so I mean, that's it. if I don't have any tangible stuff I can lock on to about whether or not I should be here, that is the one tangible thing I have. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stand up or not. My back has hurt me. I need to tell you a few things. Um, I, I prayed to God, and, and I, I have God in my life. You know, I have God, and it's a, not a bad word. It's a good word. They tell me in five of our steps, in the third step, the fifth step, right, the sixth step, the seventh step, the eleventh step, and in the second tradition, they talk to us about God. So six out of 24 spiritual principles, as we call the steps and traditions, talk about God. I have God. I've asked God to help me. You know, I, I, I still use the foxhole prayer, you know. I mean, I put a lot of other things with it, but I use the foxhole prayer, plain and simple, God, please help me, you know. <laughs> and it works real good for me, you know. As I said, my back is hurting, and I, I've surrendered to the fact that I'm not getting any younger. You know, and uh, it's required, it, it, it has required me to do a few things, like pull out my reading glasses and stuff like that. So I've asked God to help me with my back, right? Tell me, don't ask for specifics, but when your back is in pain, you ask sometimes for specifics. Take this shit from me. Right? <laughs> oh. I, I, that's one curse word. I, I, I'm trying to tell you that I'm trying to work on some things. My heart is changing, all right? My heart is changing. I did a, a meeting last night on the seventh step, and I didn't curse, and, 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 and that was good. That's a good thing. Good because why? Not because you shouldn't do it, but because I'm trying to make a change, you know? And, and this is what I'm doing. Uh, so I, I, I'm prayed up, and I ask God to, to allow me to, to reach somebody and touch somebody's heart. That somebody is you you know, to uh, not entertain, to uh, uh, simply be who I am, give you what I got. This workshop is the core of our disease. And there's some things that I want to do to help myself get out of the way. I need to look at the definition of what is the core? What are we talking about? We're not talking about an apple core, right? We're not talking about a pimple, a boil. You know, we're talking about another core, you know, and I want to thank Dominic for, um, for his, his view of the core, you know, which is certainly self-centeredness, but it doesn't stand alone. Self-centeredness doesn't stand alone. It's like, it's like what I found out through working this program of Narcotics Anonymous, and I stress Narcotics Anonymous. I go to one fellowship, I don't go anyplace else, and I'm recovering just fine. <laughs> the spiritual principles that I've been learning, that I've been bringing into my life in Narcotics Anonymous, and I'm gonna talk about a lot of them. I'm gonna talk about a lot of them. I'm not gonna live in the problem, right? The problem of, uh, uh, of the core, I want to talk about how I've been, what do we say? How I've been bringing the core to a head, right? And, and kind of getting it out. You understand? The healing process, you know? If you don't get a core out, if you get a boil, let's go to the boil, right? If you don't get the core out, you just get a little of the core out, the boil keeps coming back, you know? It keeps building up and it keeps having that inflammation. Well, for us, you know what that inflammation is. 
the getting and using and finding ways and means to get more. You know? And it talks about it in the seventh step. We're going to have a real fine time here tonight. <laughs> fine time. Seventh step, right? So you got to be on this step to, 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 to get a feeling what, what the principles are about here, right? If we check it out, check it out. If we are careless, careless, you know, careless, care or without care, care without care is careless. If we are without care, careless, <laughs> right? And fail to grasp the spiritual meaning of this step, seven, we may have difficulties and stir up old troubles. So, we, you know, the book talks about things like old troubles, infl inflammation, right? We all know what that means. The getting and using and finding ways and means to get more, you know? So, I think from my experience that the core needs some supports in order to really come alive, right? So, I want to talk about the definition of the core. The definition. I I'm going to read from it works how and why. You know, in a literature, thank God. Yes, say God, right? For giving this to N.A. You know, thank God for a group conscience. This is group conscience material. If you've got an argument with this, you probably got an argument with God. You know? That's what it say. It say, for our group purpose, right? There's but one ultimate authority. Huh? A loving God, as he may express himself in our group conscience. Our leaders are but trusted servants. In this case, our leaders were the literature review committee. They ain't but no trusted servants functioning for God. You know what I'm saying? Huh? The disease seems to affect us in the following general ways. Mentally, we become obsessed with thoughts of using. Physically, we develop a compulsion to continue using regardless. Huh? Or, or without regard to. Right? The consequences. Spiritually, we become totally self-centered in the course of our addiction. Then it goes on to give us some real, a little bit more on it. It says, obsession for us is the never-ending. Never-ending. Now, we ain't got to talk about drugs here. All right? If it's drugs that, that your obsession applies to on the, what is this, the 29th of July, 1994. If it's drugs that your obsession applies to, then go with it. Use this definition for drugs. If it's not drugs, but it's something else with living, something else that makes us, that makes us feel, feel so good, right? Then use it. <laughs> Obsession for us is a never-ending stream of thoughts relating to using drugs, running out of drugs, getting more drugs, and so on. We simply can't get these thoughts out of our minds. You know, any thought, any thought that like begins to own me, that I can't, that I can't, I can't set it to rest. You know, check it out. Check, and I've had it in recovery. I'm talking about as recently as last week. You know, the uh, be, becoming obsessed about my living situation. All right. What does that mean? That means that I'm, I'm fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions, but I just don't have enough money. You understand? To do any more than just pay my bills, meet my rent, make my car payment, feed me and my wife, all right, who doesn't work, who is, who is a handicapped person, and, and who I have married nine weeks ago, right? And I say that I will take care of you no matter what, and we have God, so we'll be all right. You understand what I'm saying? You know, but I, I'm telling you, without sharing, without putting cut on what it is that I'm going through, what do I mean putting cut on it? <laughs> I mean, what, what am I talking about here, you know? Without whacking it up with, by, by, by putting my hand up. By putting my hand up in the NA meeting, all right? In the NA meeting, by putting my hand up with my sponsor. How do I do that? I call them up. I call them up. That's the form of putting my hand up. And telling people what I'm going through, what I'm trying to do, right? Because, see, when, I, when it comes time for a vacation, all I can do is envision myself sitting in front of my TV watching HBO. You know? Well, guess what? If I take my inventory and get with a gratitude list, you understand? The gratitude list, become grateful for the things that are happening in my life. Look at where I came from, right? Where I come from, 15 years in prison, right? I'm not unique, but I'm telling you something, I don't want to do that no more. You understand? 15 years in prison, 32 detoxes, outpatient programs, rehabs, right? Facing the death penalty, all kinds of that kind of stuff. I can say, well, gee, what I'm going through today. 
just ain't that bad. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not, check it out, I'm not in the, in the, here's the, here's the words, right? Here's the counting words, right? I'm not in the, in the red, right? But I'm, I'm not in the black. I'm holding on. I'm holding on. God, what do we hear all the time? And this is not a cliche for me. God has not done with me, with this, with this hopeless, hopeless, a derelicted, degraded, abandoned, you know, self-centered, arrogant person. God has not brought me here, right, to just leave me hanging. I know it. I know it. I know it. You understand what I'm saying? You don't even have to tell me that you know it. I know it, you know? So, like, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. So we look at the other part, right? In our experience, compulsion. Compulsion is the irrational. Irrational. Well, now we're talking insanity. All right? We talk, when you say irrational, you're talking insanity. All right? The irrational impulse to continue using drugs, continue using drugs, no matter what happens as a result. No matter what happens as a result. I mean, I mean, what Check it out. Um, on, in, on March 1979, I robbed Central Jersey Bank and Trust Company. All right, in Matawan, New Jersey. And like, I knew that the consequences of that action could be real severe. Loss of liberty, loss of limb, and stuff like that, right? I knew this, you know? I mean, I knew that when I bought a 30 caliber carbine, and that when I went up against what I call America, I wasn't going up against nothing. All I wanted was some money. You understand what I'm saying? You know? You know? A, a part of me still wants to talk in political terms. You know? As if I was some political, you know, like Robin Hood, you know, but, you know, but not men in tights, right? <laughs> you, yeah, where I come from, you better not wear no tights. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> yeah, you know, so I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, and I, and I got shot, right? I got shot, shot off the road. I got, I locked up 20 to 25 years, and I knew that this was a possibility before I did what I did. You understand? So we're talking about irrational or insanity, you know? We just can't stop. Can't stop. And that happens in recovery, all right? But it don't be the drugs. All right, because if you're doing drugs, you ain't in recovery. All right? <laughs> it said in recovery and relapse, it said the minute we pick up. They say in recovery and relapse, it say the minute we pick up, the recovery process stops. Stops, you know? And a lot of us, you know, come in here and we think nobody knows it. Right? We think nobody knows it. But let me tell you something, I've been around long enough and I know I'm not unique. They say it's the same for most of us, right? So I know that you, more experienced members, have seen it too. You know when somebody has picked up. That's right. You know, whether it was two days, three days, four days, whether the urine is now clean, you know they picked up and they ain't come clean. All right? Because let me tell you something, you know, and this is my experience because it happened to me. When you come to the podium, podium, group, Table, whatever it is, hand in the meat. When you come to the podium, when you put your hand up, and all my hand is up now because I told him I'd do this commitment, right? So my hand is up without going up, right? Come to the podium, and all, all that I can talk about is the past. It's the past. All right? When I got to live in the past with everything I share, all right? Something is wrong with my present. You understand? I'm telling you, that's my experience. You understand? Where the disease, right? The disease say, you listen, you got to, you got to share that good stuff. <laughs> that, that's one and a half, man. <laughs> because God say, God say, I won't let you share. I won't let you share nothing of any substance unless you tell the truth. Unless you share about what's happening today with you, you know? So, that happens in recovery. It says denial is the part of our disease that makes it difficult. 
if not impossible, for us to acknowledge reality. You understand? That happens in recovery. It happens in recovery all the time. Think about, a, think about a, some, check it out, check it out. It, it, it don't have to happen to you, right? I told you I got a back, back problem. Been happening for two weeks. I call, didn't call a doctor until today. Until today. And it's not, not, check it out. But thank God it's not because the pain got great. The pain is not that great. It's that I got a program of recovery that sometimes it just takes me just a few days to get to. You understand? A few days. I ain't, I ain't so quick. I ain't so quick. I'm telling you, I got more in the, uh, here, here's a, here, here's, I got more in the old world, in the dead world, in the dunya, right? I got more out there than I got in here, right? And, 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 and my background is not taking care of myself. I just say through our inability to accept personal responsibilities, right, in our readings, we were actually creating our own problems, you know? So I created my own problems lots of times by this very thing here because I didn't want to acknowledge reality. The reality is that my back is not in good shape. The reality is that I've been reading and I should really have on these glasses right here, all right? This is the prison joints they gave me, you know? <laughs> you know, but, but you know, you know I, I ain't been wearing them. I've been home for nine years and I ain't been wearing them. Guess what? <laughs> I'm 46 years old. They say after the age of 40, I ain't going to ask you how old you are. They say after the age of 40, almost everybody needs some reading glasses, right? So now I'm, I'm no longer in denial, right? I'm not in denial. <laughs> you know, and I'm not in denial about my back, you know. Uh, I called a doctor today, and uh, they, they called me back. We play phone tag, and I'm going to try to get in there. Uh, after 5 o'clock on, on, on Monday, all right, you know. Um, so that, that's what's going on. The spiritual part of our disease, the part we recognize only by a feeling of emptiness or loneliness when we first get clean, is perhaps one of the most difficult aspects of addiction for us. Because this part of our disease affects us so profoundly and so personally, we may be overwhelmed when we think about applying a program of recovery to it. You know, the spiritual part. So the spiritual part of my disease needs some other things before it can run, run on its own juice. You know, the spiritual part of my disease needs obsession and compulsion, you know. And um, I came in here with that, you know. I came in here with that, and the first step began to address obsession and compulsion, you know. And I'm finding out, too, I need to say this in the most loving and caring way that I can. All right, because I, I, I don't want to, to, to say this wrong. Self-centeredness does not just belong, here's a word I learned in prison, belong in the dominion of the addict. Does not just belong to me, to you, all right? That's what I mean by dominion, in the territory of the addict. Self-centeredness can also take place in the form of in a convention committees? Huh? Service committees? All right, we're talking about a collective self-centeredness. All right, now I'm not, I'm, I don't wanna knock and kick anybody, but I'm, now I need to tell you my story, all right, about here, all right? First I wanna tell you a story about another convention, right? That's, so I can put it in the terms of principles before personality. All right, principles, that was the workshop that my friend Latik from Williamsport just did, you know? And I'm glad I came in and I got a part of that. Check it out. A good friend of mine who is HIV positive and health conscious was asked to speak at a convention. Convention is going to be anonymous, all right? Because this is not personal. This is not. I'm trying to, this, is, this is an educational experience in these rooms here. We're supposed to learn about our disease, you know? And they scheduled him at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now he's health conscious. Health conscious. I mean, we should be sensitive enough to our fellow addicts who we purport to love. Right. Oh, I love you. I ain't seen you in so long. Give me a hug and you give one of them bear hugs. <laughs> you know, squeeze the ribs out of them. You know? But we schedule them at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, maybe a little sensitivity. Rather than, you don't care how, how smashing the message might be as God gives it to this person, 
It's not, that's not the question. We don't want to burn people out in here. We don't want to wear them out like a wet rag. You know, check it out, check it out, like a large section of America does, right? Ring you out like a washcloth and throw you to the side. You understand? We don't want to kill addicts in here. We want to help each other, you know? Now, now that I put it on principle, can put it on personality now. I work. The longest job I ever had was at the state youth sign shop in Rawway State Prison. All right? Pressing out stop signs and one-way signs, drug-free school zone signs. You know, you had something to do with them. All right? <laughs> By God's grace, I've been working on the same job, on the only job that I have had on the streets for four years. Oh. All right. All right. No, 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 it's not, this is it's not for that, it's not for that, all right? I mean, I thank you, but it's not for that, right? This is what it's for. I work all day. I go to work, I get up seven o'clock in the morning. I get to my job at 8.30, I work to 4.30, 4.30. Then I drive three and a half hours, right? To Springfield, three and a half hours. And then I got to speak at 12.30 at night. I mean, I'm tired. It wears me the f out. <laughs> I'm saying, you know, sensitivity about, maybe about the fact that the, the guy is a, a responsible, Acceptable, productive member of society. He goes to work. He has to drive miles through three states to get here, right? Maybe schedule, now take it off of me. Take it away from the personality. Put on the principle. Maybe we should schedule people like that on Saturday. You understand? Let them get a little rest. So I'm sharing how sometimes, now this is insensitivity. This is not cynicism. The cynicism means that that's a plan to do that. All right? Now, it's not cynicism. It's not. What it is, right, is it's an insensitivity. It's not considering, considering other people. Now, here's the hit, right? Here's the hit. It say, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry the message to the addict. So carry the God message to me. Carry the message to me. All right? Carry it to me. You understand? By scheduling me when I'm not worn out, man, you know, carry that message and practice these principles in all our affairs, all our affairs, you know. And I say that, you know, because, because, listen, what happens is some people start canceling, you know, and I share that, you know. So I, I, I want to talk, but I'm talking about the self -centered. When I did what I did, right, whenever I did what I did, my self this was alive, a lot of times I wasn't thinking that I'm kicking you to the curb, you understand? Oh, I'm not talking the drug stuff now. I'm talking the recovery stuff. When I'm so busy, so busy trying to, trying to meet my needs, trying to meet my end, that I end up pushing you to the side and kicking you to the curb. You understand what I'm saying? I need to stop sometimes. Look at the whole picture. You understand? Um, and that might help, you know? So I shared that because I needed to share it. All right? I come to the podium seeking relief, man. I, I got to get relief. You know, I don't, I don't need to come up here and just give you what you need. I need to get what I need. You understand? So I get what I need by telling you how I feel and where I'm at. You know? So now, what I'm now, I want to talk about the solution that I found for this uh, 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 threefold disease of body, mind, and spirit. All right? The solution. Now, I need to say that the first three steps, right, in this program, Narcotics Anonymous, the first three steps... In the beginning, in the beginning, I'm not saying now, I'm saying in the beginning, what they did is they kept me clean. They kept the drugs away. You understand? They kept them away. You know, I didn't use, uh, I, got, I went to y'all for the evidence that I, that I could stay clean in the second step. You understand? I took the direction, the basic humility that comes with taking direction, 90 and 90. You understand? Get and use a sponsor. Avoid old people, places, and things. Don't use. Keep coming back. Come early and stay late. And stay late. Get a home group. You know, I took those suggestions. And those suggestions put me into a position, right, where I could now, right, look at you check you out because now I needed evidence right evidence that I can stay clean because what happens is the pink the pink cloud 
All right, the pink cloud, and I'm on a pink cloud with my marriage. All right, I need to tell you, it is the same pink cloud that I was on when I stopped using drugs. You understand that same feeling, right? So since I have the experience with the pink cloud and knowing that it's going to evaporate, all right, then I need to work the same things that I did with that 90 and 90 type pink cloud thing, you know, with my marriage, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm doing that, you know. Uh, now, I came in here and, 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 and I'm clean. I'm using because if I take suggestions, I'm not going to use because one, the first suggestion is don't use and go to meetings. <laughs> All right, so if I follow that suggestion, that's what's happening. All right, that's what's going on, right? Now, in the second step, I'm, now the pink cloud begins to evaporate, right? And it says it in the second step. It says at this point, right? At that point, we begin to feel the pain of living without drugs or anything to replace them, the pain. It says it's this pain that, that, that forces us to seek a power greater than ourselves that can relieve our obsession to use. And at that point, I need to be careful because there's two powers greater than myself. In Narcotics Anonymous. It's two. It say in recovery and relapse, right? Back here, right? It say, uh, it say, in our disease, we are dealing with a destructive, violent power greater than ourselves that can lead to relapse. So I need to be careful what I turn to. You know, in this case, I need to turn to an NA member. I need to turn to you for evidence, the evidence that, that, that I need. Because I'm like, I call it the second step, the Ripley's believe it or not step. You know, I need to have something that I can sink my teeth into. You're talking about how to put cut, how to, how, check it out, how I'm going to put cut on obsession compulsion, all right, in the spiritual part of my disease, how I'm going to put cut on it, when I put cut on it, check it out, check it out, when I put cut on it, then what am I going to do with it? It's not just enough to put cut on my disease. Now I ask myself, I got to figure out why am I putting cut on it? Why? And when I put cut on it, where am I going with it? You know, so I want to talk about this stuff. You know, it say it say here uh, that it's the evidence, right? It's the evidence. As it say here, uh, we began to uh, 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 conf check it out. We saw other people, other people recovering, and they told us what was working for them. How did they tell us that? Put their hand up. This is your job. This is my job. Put my hand up. All right, put my hand up and share on my living experience, how I'm living, what's going on in my life. You understand? We saw other people recovering and they told us what was working for them. We began to see evidence, evidence, evidence. Now, if you've been in court, you know what evidence is. All right? And I'm telling you, OJ know what evidence is, right? You know? Evidence is serious. You know? They call it, they say prima facie, on the face of it. On the face of it. It said, on the face of what? On the face of what? I, here's some evidence. Here's some, I used drugs for 33 years, right? From 56 to 88, I used drugs in prison and out of prison. You see, you heard the prison story. You said, how do you do that? I got busted in prison for sales and possession. You understand? In the sign shop, the same job I told you I had, right? So I'm saying that that happens, right? And the evidence is that 33 years of drug use, right? Uh, I'm not in prison. I'm not using drugs. I ain't on parole. There's some evidence. Check it out. Here's some more evidence. You want some hope, right? Our message is hope in the promise is freedom. I told you in March 1979 that I robbed Central Jersey Bank and Trust Company, right, for $14,000. Well, two years ago, I applied for a loan for my car. I went, yeah, I had a lot of nerve. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, at, a at that damn Charlie C back there, right? <laughs> you know, you know. But the, the nerve, that particular type of nerve, is much like much like a, a healthy fear. You understand what I'm saying? How we got fear and healthy fear. We have we have nerve, right? Ner nerve that can be characterized as arrogance, right? Arrogance and arrogance is a boundary, a border, an obstacle, an impediment towards getting to God, right? If you get arrogant, forget about getting to God. I'm, I'm going to tell you that. I ain't going to wait for the, nobody. I'm going to tell you. If you're arrogant, forget about getting to God. All right? Can't, you can't, there is not, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit as we go on. And just jump the head because Charlie C here back there talking, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's impossible to have humility and be arrogant at the same time. Can't do it. Can't do it. You know, can't pray in a state of arrogance. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so now I went to 11 banks. Here, I'm giving you a shot of hope. 
right? Went to 11 banks. 10 banks said, no way, we're not dealing with him. Not at all, forget about it. You got no work record. Where you been? Prison. <laughs> hey, they not dumb. You know what I mean? They're trained loan officers. You understand? If your job was to loan money, you, you'd be able to get a profile when somebody got a gap. Check it out. Check it out. A gap in their work history of 15 years. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so, you know, well, you know, well, the worst, the best that happened to that guy is that he was in a coma. <laughs> So you go with a medical store, oh, sir, I was, in a, I was in a coma for 15 years. <laughs> Didn't you read about me in Time magazine? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so, right? <laughs> you know, you know, so 11 banks said no, no. In fact, they sent a message, adios. Go on, man. Come on, don't, check it out. You heard this before? Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Right, right, you check it out. The 11th bank, they said, we'll take a chance on you. We'll, we'll take a shot. The 11th bank, guess what it was? Central Jersey Bank and Trust Company. So, so I'm, I'm trying to share about the evidence part of the second step. All right, the evidence. I'm, I'm, it's my job to share evidence. All right, it's your job. It's your job to share evidence. You know, I, I try, sometimes I try to stay away from telling you or suggesting what you should do, but there's certain things that, that, that I know from my experience that I'm supposed to tell you you're supposed to do. All right? And take the risk. I take the risk that I just take a risk. Because, you know, the truth, huh? The truth is, is the truth. The truth comes clear. It's something about the truth that you feel right here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it's about the truth, you know, and, I, and that, that's the truth that I know, you know. So now, now, as I say here, it say, uh, 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 as, uh, uh, as we see coincidence of the miracles happening in our lives, acceptance becomes trust. I, I go from, I go from believing in the visible, Ripley's believe it or not, right, what I can see, feel, taste, touch, to believing in the invisible. Not totally. Not totally believe, but I believe enough in the invisible to know that there's something going on because I stuck around long enough that it's even greater than you or me. You understand what I'm saying? Now that's all I got to do. And that's all, because I'm talking about how do I put cut on obsession and compulsion? How do I put cut on the spiritual part of my disease, my self-centeredness? You understand? I have to do some work. Our program has some goals in it. Some goals in NA. There's goals here. You know, it doesn't say our program, say that re recovery is more than simple abstinence. Huh? That's what it say. What can I do? Chapter 5. It say it's, it's an active change. Active. Active change in ideas, attitudes, and behaviors. This is what it say. So now, how the, how the heck do I do that? You understand? What do I do? How do I do? Why am I doing what I'm doing? What am I supposed to do? They tell me that we make a searching and fearless moral inventory. Moral, why? Well, why, why do you say, why, why not just an inventory? I mean, why isn't inventory good? Just inventory, you know? Because we need direction. We need direction on what type of an inventory we're going to do here. We're not going to inventory how many alligator shoes I got, how many bottles of ketchup are in the cupboard, how many knives, forks, spoons, and plates I have. You know, we're making a searching and feeling moral, moral inventory. The word moral is imperative, imperative to Narcotics Anonymous. Now, we're not talking about a moral, a morality, all right, that belongs to anybody other than our communities, all right? The word moral means other pertaining to community values and standards. That's what it means. That's what it means. So now that tells me I'm taking an inventory as to how I fit into my community. And the truth of the matter is, that inventory is going to show me how I did not fit into that community. How I didn't fit. You understand? Because what I'm moving, I'm moving towards a goal, right? The goal of rehabilitation. I'm talking about a goal. What does rehabilitation mean? The goal of fitting back into the same identical exact conditions that I was in before, but I couldn't make it in them. I couldn't make it in those conditions. I couldn't do it right. I was inappropriate. I, was, I couldn't respond appropriately in those conditions. How can I change this? What do I need to do? They tell me to take my inventory. All right? That's all I got to do is take my inventory. And they're talking about looking at, the, looking at what I did, not why I did what I did. Right? Two inventory steps that are going to come together. And the fifth step talks about, we're talking about that we admit it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact, exact 
nature of my wrongs. Why? Because I'm looking at why I did what I did. I'm looking at my motive. I'm looking at my motive because I got to change. I got to change and I need to know what I need to change. You understand? My car's making noise. I better take it to a mechanic because I don't know where the noise is coming from. I don't know what's wrong with it. I know it needs fixing. You know, I find out that I need fixing. I need to find out what I need to be fixed. So I do that, right? And then I find out and then people get into the mystical stuff. The real mystical, you know, the stuff that like, well, well, <laughs> what do I do in the sixth step? I mean, what do I do? Uh, uh, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. I mean, what, what is that? How do, is, that is that abstract? Is that something like uh, 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 spookism? I mean, what do I do? What do I do? It says, right, in the seventh step, right, in the seventh step, it tells me what to do. It says in the seventh step that we take our inventory, right? We take our inventory, four and five, we become ready to let God remove it. How do I let God? How do I become ready to let God? Because they're jumping ahead of themselves. They said we become ready to let God remove them. You understand? Y'all told me that God won't do nothing for me that I can do for myself. That's what you told me. You told me if, you know, if God was going to do stuff for me that I could do for myself, he'd have done it a long time ago. And I wouldn't have to be here. I wouldn't have, probably wouldn't have had to go to prison. Probably wouldn't have had to, like, rob my mother, dip into her pocketbook and steal her money, and rob my brother, rob my neighbor. You understand what I'm saying? I wouldn't have had to do that kind of stuff, you know? It's say that if I'm going to become entirely ready, and this is procedures much like eight and nine, all right? What is, what is the willingness? God is not going to take something from me that I can do for myself. God is not. God, I have to have left some stuff, have left over after I do what I need, what I can do. When I stop doing the stuff that I'm talking about putting cut on my obsession and compulsion and my self-centeredness, I'm telling you, this is the only procedure I know for doing this. All right? If what is left over after I stop doing what it is I know I can do. All right. Oh, I know what the I know what I know what my behavior is. I know why I did what I did because I did the fourth and fifth step. Now I know where to, I know what to stop doing. I know what to change. So I changed it. Check it out. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. You know, I'm talking about changing the things I can in the sixth step. That's what I'm talking about. Changing them. Changing them. Stop. Doing the things that I can stop doing. God don't need to come in and help me with that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you, it's a rationalization. You understand? Well, you know, that's a nice word for BS. Right? <laughs> it's a rationalization to think that God's going to do everything for me. You understand? Stop doing it. Now, the stuff that I can't stop doing. Here's the hint. Right? The stuff that I can't stop doing. That I just can't. Either, either I ain't got enough pain yet. Or I just can't. Obsession and compulsions got me. Got me, man. Got me. You know, I can't let go. My wife is standing on that next door. Letting go. You know, I can't let go. Right? And I did not. It say we. It say, it say that we, we, we humbly. Right? Humbly. Not arrogantly. <laughs> we humbly ask him, him, to remove our shortcomings, you know, how do, how do I do, what do I do, what, I mean, what do I do, in the, in the basic text, right, it talks about some of us will want to get on our knees, others will do this, others will do that, we're not talking dogma, we're not talking dogma, we're talking about the God of your, your understanding and the prayer of your understanding, it just said that the different forms that people will want to do, you understand, you ain't heard me identify God, and I ain't going to do it, because of the God of my understanding, you understand, they say some of us will, but whatever, check it out, check it out, listen to this, all right, listen to this, all right, this, this is more important. Mm. Listen to this. Seven step, it works how and why. Lovely lie. One sentence. Any communication with a higher power is prayer. Huh? Any communication, man. In my car, you know, with the radio off. All right? With the radio off, you hear what I'm saying? Let me know. The only chatter I need to hear. All right? The only chat I need to hear is what I'm supposed to do my, with my prayer. You understand? Whether it's in my room, whether it's in my kitchen, whether it's on a walk to work. You understand? Any communication with God. So don't let people get you to no dogma about how you're supposed to pray. You know? But any time I'm talking to God, how can I, any form of humbly asking him, when I ask God anything, I'm praying. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm praying, and I'm praying, and, and check it out. I'm in such an unmanageable state. I'm in such a pain of state, a state of pain, right? That I say, God, God, I put my hand, I say, God, God, please take, take this, take it, 
Anything that you give me is better than what I got. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, that's when it's real. That's when it's real, right? And the humility, right? Here's the humility, right? The humility is check it out. Not just praying silently to God. Why is there a fifth step? The fifth step because I not just admit to God and to, and to, and, 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 and to a, another human being, right? I mean, to, to God and to myself. I got to admit to another human being. You understand? Because in the first step, it says we're great ones for manipulating the truth. You understand? Manipulating the truth. You understand? Now when I tell you what it is, when I tell you and you and you and you what it is, I put my hand up in a meeting, put my hand up, and I say, man, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm trying to do, right? I'm admitting to another human being, all right, so that you will know the exact nature of what I'm trying to do, right? And here's the hit, right, that God, God, all of a sudden when I ask for your help, check it out. You ever heard this? God. God, if we truly want to be free, we'll take a good look at input from other addicts. Seven step, man. You know, God often works to those who care enough about recovery to show us our shortcomings. Seven step, you know. So when I put my hand up, you know, what I'm saying to not just you. You are a vessel, a vehicle. What I'm saying to God, to God at that moment when I share with you is that, God, I'm tired of isolating. I'm tired of isolating. You know, I need your help. I need your help. God says, oh, 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 I hear Ron asking for help, you know, and God begins to help me. I'm telling you, it's how it works for me. It's how it works for me. Stuff has been taken, taken away. Stuff that I thought that I had no juice over, right? Because to isolate is not just isolation and dangerous, right? But isolation is a form of arrogance. Isolation is saying to God, I don't need your help. I'm still going to play the role I always played. What was that role? When I lied, cheat, stole, manipulated. When I, try, when I, Ron H., tried to determine the outcome of any activity or involvement I had with anything. When I tried to deter, make sure it happened my way. Self-centeredness, right? When I tried to make sure it happened my way, what I was actually doing through using those things was trying to be God. You understand? You know, so so I need to in, in, invite invite God in. The goal there's some goals here in NA. You know, that the way that I see them. And the step work is helping me to put cut on my self-centeredness because I'm now, check it out, I brought my third step right on through my fourth and my fifth and my sixth and my seventh. You know, I can't go out to society. I can't try to fit back in. There's no way I'm gonna try to fit back in or gonna be able to fit back in, all right, to some new people. New people until I deal with the old people whose lives I've run through. You understand? God's not going to let me take no shortcut from A to C without going to B. B is the people. The people that, that now, all of y'all who don't know me, who I didn't rob, I didn't stick up, I didn't beat you out your money, I didn't do none of that kind of stuff. You'll say, oh, he's such a Ron, such a nice guy. These other people know the real truth about who I am. You understand? They know the real truth about who I am. It's my job to ask for forgiveness, to write the record, you know, and then to give it to God. With, with, with the results of whether or not they accept that or not. Now I become, we're talking about putting cut on my obsession, compulsion, and self-centeredness. Now I'm in the 10th step, right? I'm in the 10th step, and now I'm, I'm holding on. Yes, yes, I'm this person that I never was before. Never was this person, and it, it, it feels good. It's exciting. It's, I feel vulnerable, you know, vulnerable because my defects, right? My defects were things that I used to protect me from the feelings of reality, the pains of reality. My defects were things that I used to manipulate people, you know, to get what I wanted. Now, what I've done is I said, God, your will, not mine, be What do you want me to do? But I need to stay who I am, who I am. So now I got put with prayer, and really put with prayer directly in the seventh step, right? So now I'm in the 11th step, and I find out that now I don't have a clue, right? We're talking about what's God's will for me. What is God's will for me? What is it? You know, we're talking about uh, 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 God, uh, your will, not mine. All that sounds good, but what is God's will? You know, now that I'm this new person, that I'm, I'm polished up, I'm honed, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with what I got. You know, how do I find out? What do you want me to do, God? I begin to pray. All right, pray. Pray and ask God, what do you want me to do? Right? And I meditate. 
I begin to listen. Listen for God's answers, you know. Now check it out. The answers that I've gotten lately, let me bring it in here and now with me. The answers I've gotten lately, right, I would think that now that I'm clean and now that I'm in recovery, now that I have new behavior, new attitudes and ideas, now that I have that, that I'm ready just to jump out there, right, go on out there, <laughs> watch my back, you know. <laughs> Whoa, you know. That I'm ready to jump out there and carry the message. No, because if I'm just going to jump out there and carry the message, I'm going to check it out, check it out, check it out, put the biggie on. I'm only going to jump out there and carry my message. Huh. I pray and meditate because God has, check it out, I might have prepared myself through the changes in attitudes, ideas, and behaviors, prepared myself to then go and get prepared to do God's will. I'm talking about, in this instance, going back to school. God, how can I better how can I better serve you? How can I better serve you? And how can I be better obedient? How can I do this? You know, and I pray and I ask God because what's happening, right? Is that I am moving. I am moving. And, 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 and you'll be happy to know that this is our goal, one of our goals, an important goal, that I'm transcending what I call addict status. All right? I'm moving out of addict status. You understand? I'm moving into, into an understanding that I never had before. The understanding that I am a human being with an incurable disease of addiction. You understand? What do we mean by that? On the back of the medallion, every medallion, one year, 18 months, 25 years, 15 years, it all says the same thing. It says, my gratitude speaks when I care and when I share, check it out, put the biggie on, with others, the N.A. way. With others, we're talking about dealing with other people now, not just being restricted, confined to only, only dealing with addicts. We're talking about dealing with other people, all right? The landlord, the foreman on the job, you know, the bank where I have my car loan. You understand? What I mean? My wife who's next door sharing on letting go. You understand? And I'm sure she's doing a fine job because we went through hell. <laughs> you know? And I love you, Renee. You know? All right. <laughs> oh, I cussed two and a half times now. I'm sorry about that. But I'm talking about having to do that, you know. Uh, and uh, it says in the 11th step, it says we begin to experience an awareness and an empathy, identification. Empathy means identification. I just shared on that in Williamsport. Humility, the mother of identification. Identification. We begin to, sh to experience an awareness and an empathy and identification. Check it out. Listen, with other people. That was not possible before working this step, talking about the 11th step, all right? It goes on to say, it says, uh, we become willing to let other people, not other addicts, man, other people. I'm talking about fitting back in. Fitting in, not just because I'm clean, you understand? Here's, the, here's another hit. If I'm clean, guess what? Really, I'm just like everybody else, all right? That's not what this thing is about. Ours is about leading by example. Ours is about applying and working spiritual principles that are going to have you and me probably being leaders rather than followers. You understand? Going from one end of the spectrum, from being derelict, degraded, abandoned, homeless, jobless, showerless. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Funky. You understand? We're in the same drawers for 30 days. Going from that type of an existence, that type of an ownership of social skills. All right, of social reality to a point where we are now leaders in our communities, asked to be of service, more be revealed, right? Huh? We be asked to be of service to community organizations outside of the areas of addiction and recovery, you know, stuff like that, you know. So it's talking about other people, you know. It says we gain the ability to do what we once could not. We respect the beliefs of others, you know. This process of recovery through working the steps has put whack on my self-centeredness. You know, it's just not so important anymore. It's not so important w w what I do, all right? My job is to keep myself fit so that I can be of service to human beings, that I can serve God, that I'll be obedient. I'll go where God wants me to go. God knows if I can go or not. I'll go where God wants me to go. I'll do what God wants me to do to serve you. This is what it's about. This is what it's become. You. Check it out. And I don't mean you, the addict. Because at a point, I stopped seeing you as you, the addict. You are an addict. And I understand that some of the behaviors and responses are the, that of obsession, compulsion, and self-centered. But I'm talking about dealing with you the same way I deal with your mother. 
The same way I deal with deal with deal with uh, your father. Same way I deal with your children. The same way I deal with your brothers. The same way I deal with the foreman on the job. Dealing with you as a human being, you know, and having the appropriate responses and the ability to do that. This is not an easy job without steps. It doesn't happen without steps, you know. And I have examples with that, and and I'm and I'm and I and I've shared them recently on tapes. You know, people giving me the finger and all that kind of stuff. You know, and I don't respond like I used to respond anymore. You know, I don't beat people down in the ground because they give me the finger anymore. You know, I'm telling you, I had that experience recently. I mean, the last experience I had, I beat a guy down to the asphalt because he gave my mother the finger. It's 1979, you know, in front of a police station. I mean, I was out of my mind. Irrational, irrational, you know. And uh, three weeks ago, a woman gives me the finger, and I go back to her, and I ask her some simple questions like, uh, after some discussion, I say, well, I'm your neighbor, and I wouldn't do that to you. All right, after some nice discussion, all right? I mean nice, I don't mean out of order. I mean, I was real nice with it, you know? And I told her that neighbors should be neighborly and that that's not a neighborly thing to do. And she said, sir, you're right. I'm sorry, I apologize. You know, we're talking about a change, a change. It doesn't have to, don't have to the changes don't have to be all profound. But when they all come together, you know, when they all come together, you know, when you get the, the composite, you know, compo you know how a composite sketch when you rob someplace, you know, they, they, somebody say you got this kind of ears and somebody say you got this kind of nose, and kind of eyes, and the next thing they got a picture of you, you know. I'm talking about that kind of a composite, you know. Um, my heart is changing. I need to tell you that. Something's happened to my heart, all right. My heart is changing. Um, I don't know what it is. I shared it on tape because maybe down the road more will be revealed, right. You know, but things are changing with me. Um, I have a lot more serenity in my life. A lot more serenity, you know. Um, a lot more tolerance, you know. I've gotten the understanding of patience, too. Patience, you know. I was doing, a, I was speaking at a meeting in Columbia, Maryland, um, and, and, and the newcomer, you can always learn something from somebody, all right. Don't let nobody tell you that. Newcomer, a guy had less than a year, he came to me, he said, Ron, he said, you were talking about patience. And I said, yes. And he said, do you, do you really know where the root comes from? And I said, no, I'm honest. I ain't got to act like I know anymore. You know, I know the dictionary said, but I didn't know the root. He said, it comes from the Greek. And it means to suffer. To suffer. Now I understood. Because what it means for addictions and addicts is that it means for me to have patience so that I can suffer not having what I want when I want it and getting it when God wants me to have it. You know? It's deep, and this is what has happened through applying acceptance and humility and understanding and uh, honesty, open-mindedness, willingness, spiritual principles and stuff like that, you know. Uh, I'm about done with this. Uh, I don't know what I said. I shared on this in Williamsport, not in Williamsport, I'm sorry. I shared on this at the New Jersey Convention, and this is the second time I've shared on, uh, on uh, uh, the, the core of our disease, all right. Since I'm not James Brown, an entertainer, who, who, who will sing, try me, the same way each time, all right? Or I'm not the whispers singing Olivia Lost and Turned Out, you know? That I'm an addict sharing his here and now experience with the core of our disease. This commitment is nothing like the other commitment. I can tell you that. And I'm real happy to say it's not, all right? Because if I don't keep my stuff in the here and now, if I try to be who I was last month or the month before, right, then my recovery is going to come to the standstill, all right? It's not about that. I'm real happy with being asked to come here. Um, any any, any, any uh, sharing that I did about uh, uh, the committees and stuff like that is, it was not of, a, of, a, of an attack, not in the form of criticism. It's supposed, you were supposed to share honestly. We we're supposed to help each other, you know. And if I don't share these things, I'm a person who's at the podium often. Often, right? Often, you know, try 11 conventions this year, you know, not to mention group level stuff and, and, and retreats and speaker jams and stuff like that, you know, and I'm saying people need to know, not, to, not that you don't ask people to come, but that you consider them that maybe, you know, schedule them right, you know? Right. Now, I've given you what I got. Mm -hmm. I'm an addict named Ron. Thanks for listening. Thank you.